How's it going guys? Coming at you with another test of the HPR Black Ops 9mm ammunition. This is the 85 grain OTF. And for those of you guys that have good memories, you know that we just tested this round a couple months ago. Did the exact same test that we're going to do today. Um, this test, the test a couple months ago, HPR saw. And they said that, you know, really this round did not perform like it was supposed to in that test. And so what they asked me to do was to retest the round for them. They sent me some ammunition out to do that. And we're running kind of a very, very similar test. In this test, we're using the same test media, which is the clear ballistics gel through four layers of denim. We fired six shots. And we fired out of three different weapons. We fired one. We fired this one shot out of the Springfield XDS, which is a 3.3 inch barrel. We fired two out of the Glock 19, which is a four inch barrel, and then we fired three out of the Keltec Sub 2000, which is a 16 inch barrel. So that you guys can see carbine ballistics with this with this ammunition as well. Now I really want to try not to get super bogged down uh, with all the nitty gritty details of each one of these shots because there's just a lot of information to go over and I just, I figured you guys can read it as well as I can say it. So in the description box down below, I'm going to leave all the details for each one of these shots so you guys can go ahead and take a look at each one of those. Um, but I'm just not going to cover all of those details right here in, in, in the video. It'll make it just way too long. We're also, at the end of this video, we're going to break down one of these rounds. We're going to show you kind of what's on the inside. So let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these shots. Now the first shot that, we, that we're looking at here was taken out of the Springfield XDS, the 3.3 inch barrel. Now the, as you can see, the jacket and the core stayed together and you're gonna see that trade, trademark denim um, chunk that's, uh, that's plugged right there in the tip of that hollow point. Pretty much every round that I fired into gel has had that same thing. So it just seems to cut that denim right out. And it does feel like the, the tip of that hollow point is, is pretty sharp, actually. This round fired out of the XDS penetrated to 22 inches, okay? And it had a cavity right around the 18 inch mark that is about four inches long and about two inches wide. So the bullet must have yawed or flipped around or something right there at that 18, 18 inch mark and left a nasty little cavity. Now we're going to skip over shot number two and we're going to go to shot number three because uh, shot number two is what we're going to really want to focus on. But shot three, okay? Oh, I forgot to mention that that first round was chronographed at 1,308 feet per second. Now the third round penetrated to 26 and a quarter inches and we chronographed the third shot at... Uh, 1330 feet per second. This is out of the Glock 19. Okay, now you can see that we did have co uh, jacket core separation. You can see that signature plug there of denim. This one penetrated 26 and a quarter. At 23 inches, we, we developed a cavity that was three inches long and about an inch and a half wide. And that was right around when the the jacket and the core separated, was right around that, that 23 inch mark. So we had a lot of penetration with this round. And the reason why that is, is just because we didn't get the, the the expansion that we should have seen. Now you're still looking at quite a bit of an expansion on that jacket, that jacket right there. So that's still creating a bit of a, a nasty little wound channel. It's just doing it at a lot of penetration, um, at, at the cost of a lot of penetration. Now the fourth shot is a little bit of a. We, I'm kind of null and voiding this shot mainly because we fired it out of the Keltec Sub 2000 and I shot it kind of low in the block. It bounced off the table right around the 16 to 70, 17 inch mark and at that point uh, burst into three different pieces. And so I'm really thinking that this is kind of a a uh, voided test just because it did have contact with the table itself. Uh, but we we chronographed this one at 14, 1,403 feet per second. Uh, so that's what it did. Now it penetrated to a total of 21 and a half inches and that being the tip of that round did 21 and a half inches. So you know still quite a bit of penetration um, even after breaking into three pieces. Now the fifth shot as you can see, all we could recover from the fifth shot is the actual base of the bullet. At 12 and a half inches, the core and the tip of the round actually penetrated out the side of the gel. So we were only re able to, re to recover this 33.9 grain chunk of the base of the bullet. And as you can see, we can actually see into the bullet there, you see that compressed powder that makes up the compressed copper powder that makes up the core there. 
But even after breaking up at 12 and a half inches, it still had this 33 or 34 grain piece of bull. It still had the ability to penetrate all the way to 20 and a half inches. So that's pretty amazing um, penetration, even for that little base. So that was out of the, the, um, the carbine as well. Um, and what the, car the, what the uh, chronograph said was 1403, which is the same speed as this one. So I'm not sure if that was accurate enough or not. Um, this one for sure we recorded 1403. This one we didn't record the velocity and we did not record the velocity of this last round, which is shot number six. Now shot number six penetrated to 30 and a quarter inches. That's a long way to penetrate into gel. Um, as you can see, we have jack core separation. This occurred right around the 19 inch mark. And so the core continued all the way over to 30 and a quarter inches. Now, I think that the reason why that happened was because we are firing it out of, again, the carbine length barrel. And the average velocity that we were getting out of the Caltech Sub 2000 was 1,456 feet per second, which equated to 400 foot pounds. So we weren't getting the, the expansion that we would have liked. And where the core stayed together, you know, into a solid projectile, that's where I think we're seeing the, uh, the large amount of penetration that we are seeing. So that's why I think we got just huge amounts of penetration out of it. Pretty much essentially acted like a, a full metal jacket at that point. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at shot number two, okay? And this is where I feel like the, the round performed like it, sh was, it was supposed to perform. So as you can see here, we've got the core, which separated out, and then you have these little fragments of this compressed copper. And this is actually the, the ring of the, the hollow point there. And so really this one came out of the Glock 19 at 1340 feet per second. And right around the four and three quarters inch mark, we got a breakup of the round. So we started seeing um, the round just come to pieces. And it, from there, so about the five inch mark all the way to the 10 inch mark, we just were just throwing pieces of the round everywhere. And so we've got this dispersion from five, four, five inches, roughly five inches to 10 inches. And we got about an inch and a half wide dispersion of these fragments. Just a nasty little wound channel as you're, as you're seeing here on the screen. And this is what I feel like HPR has designed this round to actually do, is to perform just like this in the gel. And, uh, and because of that, I think this is a nasty little round. If this was to perform just like this, like you're seeing here in front of you at 10 inches into, the, into a human body, it would be very, very hard to actually you know, survive this, this shot for sure. I think, I think that this is what they, they have in mind when they, are, when they uh, design this round. But what I want to do now is I want to break this down. Now I've already I've already got my hammer out and I hammered this uh, the the round uh, apart. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that here. Um, first, let's take a look at the bullet itself. And as you can see, it's that black coated copper jacket, which looks just nasty. It looks awesome. Um, it's it's fully fully encased there. Uh, just that nasty little hollow point there. So kind of a cool looking bullet. Uh, here's the casing, nice nickel plated casing. You know, you do have the HPR head stamp on it. Okay, and let's see if you can see on the inside, maybe just a tad there. Okay, the inside of that. And then as you can see, it's like kind of a, a medium flake powder there. So it's like, a, it's like that flat flake and kind of a medium size powder. So anyway, that's what the that's what the round looks like on the inside there. Anyway, guys, that test is what it is. You know, you take you take away what you want to take away from it, but um, I feel like it's lacking in some in some consistency. I would like to see this happen every time we tested it. Now, again, we're testing in the clear ballistics gel, and I know that um, from people comparing uh, clear ballistics gel with uh, standard FBI ballistics gel, that's a ten percent ten percent you know gelatin. It does. It um, rounds tend to penetrate more in the in the clear ballistics gel than they do in 10% ballistics gel, uh, the FBI calibrated stuff. I think it's just that FBI gel is just a little bit a little bit more dense, and so maybe the round you know might just not be hitting a hard enough um, you know hitting, getting enough of that 
of that initial impulse um, to break it apart. But still, I still would like to see more consistency on 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 the HPR's uh, standpoint. But uh, anyway, guys, so take take with take from it what you will. But uh, if you guys have any questions or comments about the HPR ammunition, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Now I will be testing the 40 and the 45 ammunition from, from Black Ops. And to be honest, I really feel like the 40 and the 45 is going to perform uh, by far better than the nine millimeter. I just, it's just a gut feeling. You know, there's a little bit more, a uh, little less sectional density with those larger rounds. And I feel like they're gonna hit a little bit harder um, and probably have a better breakup than the nine millimeter. So that's just my, that's just my actual feeling on it. So we'll see how well it does in the future. But, uh, but again, guys, if you have any questions, let me know down below. And don't forget to subscribe for those future tests um, here coming up very soon. But uh, anyway, guys, I really appreciate you watching. And we will catch you guys in the next video. See ya.